Wow, you can't beat this. I was dying to say that. But actually, you know, in truthfulness, we're at our friends and clients, Glenn and Cheryl's house. I'm in their backyard garden. It's fall. This is just one beat in a bounty in this bed here. And we're gonna interview Glenn in a few moments and he's gonna tell us all about this amazing space they've created back here. And hopefully that's an inspiration for you as well. Hey there everybody, Scott. I am in the backyard of my great friends and clients, Glenn and Cheryl in Huntington Beach. I was inspired by a Facebook post I saw of Glenn's just about a week ago with his wonderful, amazing backyard garden and the winter bounty that he's had and inspired me to do a blog post and to do this video to perhaps enlighten you folks to show exactly what can be done in our suburban backyards. Here in Huntington Beach, the lots average about 60 by 100, which is 6,000 square feet. The backyards are typically square or rectangular and oftentimes there's just a patio or a patch of grass. Glenn and Cheryl have transformed their backyard, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that today, Glenn. How's that sound? Great. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for being willing to be with us here. Cheryl's off camera, keeping Dakota the dog out of our way. And I was curious, what was yours and Cheryl's original inspiration when you first bought the house, saw the backyard in its old state, and then what prompted you to think about doing a garden? Well, both Cheryl and I love gardening. So when we saw this backyard, we knew we weren't going to keep it in a traditional fashion with a lawn. We don't have uh, young children, we have adult children, so we didn't need that space for that purpose. And since we love gardening so much, we thought what better way than to turn it into a vegetable garden. I think that's a great, and what our viewers can't see too is off camera we still have a very large patio and entertaining space. They've got a fire pit, couch barbecue and table, but instead of looking at a patch of grass that you've got to mow and maintain, you're looking out at beautiful you know, nature's bounty here. Speaking of that, tell us a little bit about the vision you have for the winter garden, which I think is in place now. Right, well we've uh, since removed our summer plants, our tomatoes and squash, and we've now gone to winter vegetables like cauliflower, beets, and red cabbage. We have kale also, along with some other ones like lettuce, which grows pretty much year-round here. Awesome. You know, I was amazed because I'm kind of a gardener, but not more ornamentals. I was amazed when I started looking at what's behind us, and you told us the origin of this. It's not really expensive to garden like this, is it? It's not terribly expensive. We traditionally buy pony packs, which are six packs of uh, starters. Sometimes we use seeds, but uh, it's fairly inexpensive, and then it's just a matter of maintaining it, a little bit of organic fertilizer, and uh, then you're ready to harvest. That's amazing. I know, I think they told me, and we'll get to this later, the, the, the beet bed is prolific, and I think Cheryl said they started with one little pony six-pack. Tell me about your um, other startup costs, let's say your your soil, your, your containers, and so forth and so on, just to give our viewers an idea of what it takes to kind of start something like this. For the larger beds, uh, we had to purchase some soil from a local company here in town. Uh, and then bring it to the backyard after they dumped it. So that was a little bit more expensive for the startup cost, but afterwards it's just really maintaining it, maybe adding a little bit of amendments to it now and then, so okay. it's not terrible. You're amending the soil from time to time as you're rotating your problems. Absolutely. And something else that I noticed here that I really like is you have year-round interest because surrounding our perimeter here, we've got um, evergreen trees, citrus trees, and whatnot. Tell us a little bit about that because that's all around it, right? Exactly. Those are things like uh, lemons, Eureka lemons, Mexican limes, uh, Washington navel, and then we have a ruby red uh, grapefruit. I like to stop right there because I've got a garnish for every cocktail that I like at every season of the year. So you're speaking to me there. But no, in all seriousness, I love to eat healthy. And what's kind of fun about this is you said you, you know, you eat for for months from this garden, right? You were telling me how you can pick, you know, the, the outer leaves and you just kind of work your way up. And we do, we do with uh, lettuce and kale. Those are you know, vegetables, you uh -huh. can eat the outside leaves. Uh, we also love to give our produce away, so friends and family often benefit. That's awesome. Speaking about giving, they were talking about some gifts they did that last year, which is a, correct me wrong, a habanero spicy sweet jelly. Jelly, yeah. And we can see our habanero peppers in the background here. Tell us a little bit about that, because that's different than our ordinary greens and our veggies. Right, that was a surprise to us, because <laughs> the original intent was to buy a pepper that was something you would add to your salad. Okay. Not necessarily a habanero, which you can't. And uh, so we were surprised. We looked at the stick and it said sweet and spicy. And we thought, well, that sounds pretty good. But 
Of course, once it started yes. to grow and we cut into it, we found out we actually have a habanero. So we've taken that and made jelly out of it. That's amazing to me. And I think the takeaway from that is, you know what? Expect the unexpected. Start your garden. From what Cheryl told me, they buy their plants locally here, so it's kind of easy from a research standpoint. They just go to the nursery and they're selling you what's going to grow and have the best chance of growing. But experiment a little bit. Again, expect the unexpected. Be open to something. You've had a nice bonus with your peppers. Absolutely. We've loved it. That's great. So in closing, Glad, tell us maybe a couple of major points of why you think you've benefited from having this garden versus typical, you know, patch of grass back here. What makes life better for the garden? Well, I think for Cheryl and I, it's it's something we just enjoy doing. So when you love doing something, um, it just adds to the home experience here. And so we love having a garden. We love sharing with it um, and, and giving to others too. I think I love that. And for me, that just means they've taken a house and they've made it a home. And I remember even Glenn say, I said, where's the irrigation? Well, they chose not to do automatic or drip irrigation because Glenn, you said it's very soothing and enjoyable for you to be yes. out in your garden it every day. Is. So again, you're creating that space where you have enjoyment in your own home. And that's what we love as realtors to see our clients, no pun intended, grow and flourish and blossom in their homes. So thanks so much for watching today. And we hope that you've got some inspiration to maybe take a little chunk of your house and turn it into something amazing like Glenn and Cheryl have.